Hello and welcome. In a past video I uploaded a couple of weeks ago, I did a one year in review of owning our Tesla Model S. And if you're interested in seeing that video, click on this card that will pop out right there and you'll be able to see it. Today what I wanted to do is review our charging setup that I have here because we have two electric cars. And so I wanted to show how convenient it is to be able to charge at home. When we first got both of our electric cars and we had them together in here, the conundrum that we had that we were trying to figure out was where to park them and that we could charge them and have them both be able to reach this uh, juice box charger. The cord that comes with the juice box is 25 feet, so that's a lot of um, cable to work with, but where can we have it be just located permanently that it's really convenient to be able to plug into our cars? The Tesla's charge port door is right there, which is right in the middle of this uh, garage door opening and above it is the garage door so there's nothing solid we can mount the charger on near the back of the Tesla. And then the Leaf, its charger is right here on the front of the car. So that means if we're going to have a charge cable mounted between uh, that can service both cars, it's got to be up here in this front area of the garage and I've got to back the Leaf in because if I drive it straight in then the charge port door is really far away. Now obviously if I did that we, we could potentially have the cord not mounted in any particular place and we could just coil it up and then drag it where we want it, but that's just really not convenient. Uh, also we wanted the leaf to be backed in because uh, over here on this side you can see I have it right up against the wall and I actually use these 4x4s down here as a guide to make sure that I don't scratch the body of the car and the tires hit it first. And you can see that I turn the tire of the car so that it's coming up against the wall and it touches the four by four uh, before anything else. But we wanted it to be right up against the wall because the driver, of course, sits right here on this side. And we wanted to have, we wanted to maximize the space between the cars uh, so that the bikes that the kids ride can come down through and hopefully not scratch the cars. You'll see the Tesla on this side, I did a very similar thing where we'd park it pretty close to the side and we just don't get in or out of the car on this side and we have passengers get out before we pull into the garage. So with that positioning being the case in our garage, this cable was the best solution that I could come up with where we have it routing around and then I have this long 18 or 19 foot uh, one by one inch metal bar that hangs right here below the garage door. And that way we're able to have the cable and the, the plug mounted and hanging here always available and easily uh, it can reach to both the Tesla and the leaf at the same time, at the same location. Uh, right here behind me, you can see we have a Juicebox Pro 40. This is a 40 amp charger that plugs into a NEMA 1450 outlet, and it allows us to be charging at 9.6 kilowatts, uh, which basically means it can refill our Tesla overnight, and it can charge our Nissan Leaf in just a matter of a couple of hours. Now this is their Wi-Fi enabled unit, this is what the Juicebox Pro 40 web interface looks like. Uh, right here is where you can administer your devices. Um, we can go into the, see the additional details on the device and see that we can specify various settings, uh, notification settings, etc. We can go into the history area here and up here it'll show us all the different sessions that we want to look at. We can download these as a CSV file. Uh, under reports here we can go into user sessions and that's showing us the same type of information but we can specify specific time frames. And then we can also go here into the energy statements and we can see how much energy we've consumed over the months. I'm planning on doing a full uh, detailed YouTube video about this Juicebox Pro 40, its web interface, and just a review of the device in general. If you're interested in seeing that video, click subscribe, change the bell notification to all, and you will get notified when I upload that video. What I wanted to show you is how I have routed the cord. So as you can see here, um, the, the charger is mounted here on the wall with a bracket and it can be removed with just taking out this screw that is right there underneath it and can be taken off but we don't normally need to take it off because it's just a permanent installation in my opinion. In our frunk we have our uh, mobile charger that allows us to charge when we're not at home. Now this juice box came with this device right here which is meant to just be bolted on the wall like that you can um, loop the cable over the top of it and then here on the front of it it has the J1772 uh, shaped uh, plug adapter that you can plug your uh, end onto it so that it hangs there on the wall. But I didn't want to do it that way, it didn't seem convenient to be coiling and uncoiling the cable. So what I did is I ran the cable up this way and I drilled some holes 
on the side of rail of my garage door, you can see right there. And I have some shower hooks there. Those are rings to uh, keep the shower on your shower rod. And that helps to hold the cable out here to the end. And then here on the end, I, I have these basic metal uh, rings there that are screwed up into the rail above on the garage door opener. And then I have this uh, wooden block right here just there to give it some tension to pinch against this rail uh, because I didn't want this metal bar higher than it is and you'll see why in a second. And then I have some more uh, shower rings here and then I have zip ties on them here to hold the cable so that it doesn't slide along the shower ring. I want the shower ring to move with the cable. So then after that it comes this way and I have another shower ring there, that one with a zip tie on it, that one with a zip tie, etc. Here I have two shower rings. This one here just hangs kind of on it loosely. This one here is zip tied on it. Most of the time they just stay next to each other. Uh, but the reason why I have two there is because you can see there's a loop here and sometimes depending on what's going on I might uh, take this ring and move it over this way temporarily just to hold the cable more uh, up out of the way. But most of the time just leaving it hanging is just fine. And then over this way is the cord itself or the plug and this is the has the uh, adapter on it for the tesla right there and that's what we just leave on it most of the time because we're charging our tesla more often i can relatively easily push this right here which unlocks the adapter and then i can pull this adapter off and then this is the um, j1772 uh, plug right there when we want to charge our Model S, we have this just hanging right here. So we can just get out of our car and just reach up right here and grab this. And then we can come down here to our Tesla and open up the door. And then to open up the door, I usually just press the key fob here on the back trunk area and hold it down for a few seconds. And then the charge port door opens. And then I can just take this adapter that came with the Tesla and plug it in. And just like that, our Tesla starts charging. And if we look over there at the Juicebox Pro 40, it shows now on the right side a orange light that is illuminated, showing that it is now charging. Now, if our Tesla is charging currently, but we want to leave, there's a couple different things we can do. Uh, there's buttons on, side, on the inside of the car that we can use to just stop charging and unlock the charge port. But I can, the easiest thing to do when I'm outside of the car is just press and hold the key fob again on the trunk area and that light will turn white and now it's ready and I just pull out. I don't have to push the button or anything like that. And then I can just hang this up here on the hook again and then we leave. Now if I want to charge my Nissan Leaf then I have to pull out the key fob here and press and hold on this button right there and that will pop open this charge port door. Open that up and then this orange one right here is the J1772 plug that I want to use to, to charge. Uh, so then I reach up here and grab my uh, charger cable and this is where that loop down there comes into play. I can just pull and it gives me a whole bunch of extra cable and that's also why I have those rings zip tied so that they don't move around so that they stay appropriately spaced. And you can see it stops right there right before that hook. Oh and by the way this hook is just your standard bicycle hook you'd screw into your ceiling or your wall to hang your bikes and I have some other found hardware there that I just um, used to hang it there. So then here I on the uh, plug I need to take off this adapter which I usually just set right there and then this lease, the Nissan Leaf just takes the J1772 plug directly and when I've plugged in the car you heard it beep there and this is the indicator showing the charging and it's above 66% um, right there already. When, when I'm going to leave and take the, the leaf somewhere, then all I need to do is press this button. It'll stop it charging automatically and then I pull out. Once I've unplugged the leaf, I then plug in the adapter, which is easier with two hands on. And then I can just hang this back up right here on this hook on the handle right there. Now at this point, obviously, I don't want that big loop hanging down. So I walk over here and just simply grab this cord and pull back. and bring back all that slack until here the uh, ring is right here on the edge of this. Once I've done that then I just close this charge port door and close the door and then drive away.
over here on the left side, I did a similar thing as the other side where I used the garage door track and just screwed some holes there through that um, flange that's on the top side and ran some bolts down through and ran this metal bar through this loop. This metal bar is really close to touching the wall here, but I left a few inches there so that I can hang things on it if I want to. This metal bar I uh, purchased from a nearby metal supply store and it's a big old long uh, section, it's about 18 uh, feet long um, and it works just fine to hold all this weight and it's a one by one inch square metal tube meant for like welding and building things. Uh, you can see it has some bend in it and that bend is actually what I want because when I close the garage door that bend is good to make sure that nothing catches on it and also this metal bar that's pushing it goes right close to it. And then conversely, when I open the garage door, it doesn't touch the metal bar at all. It is right there on the edge of it. And so it has the clearance necessary to not get touched by the garage door. Now another uh, element of uh, clearance you may want to consider is the trunk. We often are opening the trunk while we're in our garage. And here the metal bar just barely is a few inches away from the cable and the metal bar. So it works just fine. If you look up the Juicebox Pro 40 on Amazon, you'll see that the uh, appearance of it has changed. I can show you that the device looks quite a bit different and is now $600. I paid $550 for mine, but I do recommend getting this next gen 40 amp plug here, which makes it much easier to remove uh, because the hardwired ones um, potentially require you to uh, get an electrician to install it and remove it when you're going to take it with you if, if you do. If you are interested in purchasing the Juicebox Pro 40, I will include a link to it in the description down below. And then also our little kid Tesla here, I just have it up here on this cabinet and then we have the charge cord coming around this way and then it plugs into the side of the kid Tesla right there. And so with this charging setup and two electric vehicles, we never need to go to a gas station and it is great. We're able to charge up either overnight or during the day whenever we want to and uh, we are able to charge up plenty fast to do all the things that we want to do. If you're interested in future videos that I'll be uploading relating to electric vehicles or solar or technology, click subscribe, change the bell icon to all, and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And with that, thanks for watching and have a great day.